In a previous video where we introduced diagonalizable matrices, we saw how an n by n matrix with n distinct eigenvalues is guaranteed to be diagonalizable. But what if an n by n matrix has fewer than n distinct eigenvalues? Is it still possible that such a matrix is diagonalizable? Of course, the answer is yes. It's possible that one or more of the eigenvalues have multiple linearly independent corresponding eigenvectors, and so there still may be enough eigenvectors to diagonalize the matrix. This idea, though, suggests a new definition, and here that definition is. Let lambda 0 be an eigenvalue of an n by n matrix A. The dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to lambda 0 is called the geometric multiplicity of lambda 0. So that's the number of vectors in a basis for the eigenspace. The number of times lambda minus lambda 0 appears as a factor in the characteristic polynomial of A is called the algebraic multiplicity of lambda 0. So geometric multiplicity is the dimension of the eigenspace corresponding to the eigenvalue, and algebraic multiplicity comes from the characteristic polynomial. Let's take a look at an example to make sure you understand these terms. Here's a 3 by 3 matrix A. If we find the determinant of lambda i minus A, that's its characteristic polynomial, we can do that with a cofactor expansion along the second column here, and that gets us to this factored characteristic polynomial. We see the eigenvalues are 3 and 5, so only two eigenvalues in this 3 by 3 matrix. Now, based on our definition, what's the algebraic multiplicity of 3, and what's the algebraic multiplicity of 5? Well, the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue 3 is the number of times that lambda minus 3 appears in the characteristic polynomial. We see that's one time and two times. So the algebraic multiplicity of this eigenvalue 3 is 2. On the other hand, lambda minus 5 only appears in the polynomial once, and so the algebraic multiplicity of the eigenvalue 5 is just one. So there are the algebraic multiplicities. Now based on this, do we know if the matrix is diagonalizable or not? Well, no, we still don't know. We have to check the dimension of the eigenspaces, and that's the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalues. And note that even though this 3 by 3 matrix only has two distinct eigenvalues, the sum of the algebraic multiplicities is 3, which would always be the case. An n by n matrix has a characteristic polynomial of degree n, which we could then split into n linear factors, and the number of linear factors is going to be the sum of the algebraic multiplicities. As for the eigenspaces and the geometric multiplicities, I'll leave it to you to verify this. There's a link in the description to my lesson going over eigenspaces. But indeed, this is a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 3. And this is a basis for the eigenspace corresponding to lambda equals 5. So the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals 3 is 2 because the basis of this eigenspace has two linearly independent eigenvectors. On the other hand, the geometric multiplicity of lambda equals 5 is 1, because its eigenspace has just one eigenvector. And remember, the number of vectors in the basis for the eigenspace is its dimension, which is exactly how we defined the geometric multiplicity, the dimension of the eigenspace. So in this case, since we do have three linearly independent eigenvectors, this matrix would actually be diagonalizable, even though it has only two distinct eigenvalues. But of course, it's not always the case that the algebraic multiplicities will end up matching the geometric multiplicities. If that was the case, it wouldn't be so important to distinguish between these things. So here's one last theorem. If A is a square matrix, then the geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue of A is less than or equal to that eigenvalue's algebraic multiplicity. So when you find the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue, 
the number of times that its corresponding factor appears in the characteristic polynomial, you can think of that as a cap on its geometric multiplicity, or a cap on the dimension of its eigenspace. As soon as we saw that the algebraic multiplicity of lambda equals 3 was 2, we could be sure that the dimension of the eigenspace would be less than or equal to 2. And the second part of the theorem is that if A is a square matrix, then A is diagonalizable if and only if the geometric multiplicity of every eigenvalue is equal to its algebraic multiplicity. Again, if we've got the square n by n matrix, like I said before, the sum of the algebraic multiplicities is n, and so if the geometric multiplicities add to n, then we have enough eigenvectors to diagonalize the matrix. So if all the geometric multiplicities equal the algebraic multiplicities, we'll have n eigenvectors, and so we'll be able to diagonalize the matrix. So that's what geometric and algebraic multiplicity of eigenvalues are. The geometric multiplicity of an eigenvalue is the dimension of its eigenspace, and the algebraic multiplicity of an eigenvalue, lambda zero, is the number of times lambda minus lambda zero appears as a factor in the characteristic polynomial of the matrix. There's a link in the description to a video where I go over some more examples of finding these multiplicities if you need some extra practice. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.